have known Fred Dean and his family essentially my whole life. Um, I didn't have an opportunity to play with Fred in high school, but he was a classmate of my younger brother, Ben Jones. Uh, it, it seems like yesterday to some of us who fought so hard for desegregation, but it really didn't pass until I was in high school. Uh, we began desegregation in Louisiana, as you know, in the late 60s, and, and finally we had complete desegregation, and Fred came over from uh, the not equal uh, other school in town, uh, not separate and equal, uh, and he came to Ruston High. Uh, that was after I had played my senior year, so uh, he was uh, two years behind me. But I have worked with Fred and his family literally all my life. Uh, my father had a lumber business, and he had his father helped out at the lumber yard, and his brothers, actually, uh, his brother James is still employed by me, uh, or not. He's a co worker of mine here in the lumber business that I'm in. And I've known Fred, what a great, fabulous guy he, he was. Uh, it's a sad thing that we have lost him to COVID, but uh, he, he came back to Ruston, as many of us have that played professional football, from my father to his classmate, Steve Rogers, to my cousin, Andy Hamilton, to my little brother, to myself. Ruston has a. a has kind of deep-seated hooks that bring you back home, and, and Fred did come back home, and he has been doing well. We sat together for most of the Ruston High football games for the last 15 <laughs> or 20 years, uh, and we compared notes and didn't say anything. It's really nice. Uh, fans in the stands that know how to watch football that don't boo but just cheer for the home team. <laughs> That's what Fred and I were on the top row of Ruston High Bearcat Stadium. Uh, but he's done, he, he was just a great guy. I mean, he came back and he dedicated himself to the community. He dedicated himself to his faith. He worked as a youth counselor in the church that he was with. He preached on the weekends uh, and just was a strong uh, pillar of our community. And we had a big send-off. Uh, on Saturday at Louisiana Tech Stadium, and it was it was a nice event for Fred. But uh, I would rather have the opportunity to sit next weekend on the top row at a properly distant location, watching the Russian High Bearcats play football. Well, in, indeed, and, and the fact I know you, you savor the memories of you mentioned uh, some 15 years that uh, you were able to do that. Uh, Fred attended Louisiana Tech. He had opportunities to go. Uh, apparently to play for the legendary Eddie Robinson at Grambling, but uh, he decided to attend Louisiana Tech where he enjoyed an All-American career and, like yourself, is a member of the College Football Hall of Fame. Yeah, Fred did go to Louisiana Tech. Of course, I live in a community, i.e. Louisiana Tech and Grambling are in, the, in, in basically the same town. I mean, Tech and Grambling campuses are about two and a half miles apart, maybe three miles. Uh uh, just right on the same street, as a matter of fact. Uh, and Coach Eddie Robinson and was such a great guy and a dear friend of mine and, and a dear friend of my father's. Uh, matter of fact, every off season I would work out at Grambling. Hmm. But Tech had, uh, uh, you know, they had some really good football teams and, and, and Fred decided to go to Tech and it was a good choice. Uh, they since have retired his number, and he's in the Hall of Fame at Tech. He had a great career, uh, and, and he did very well. I mean, what a lot of people don't realize is uh, Fred was the second fastest man on Louisiana Tech's football team. Now, <laughs> wow. key into this, this is a man that's six four and a half. He was 245 pounds at the time, but... He ran the 100-yard dash in high school, but the only person that could he couldn't outrun was Roger Carr, who happened to be probably the fastest man in the NFL when he was at his tops. So it was amazing the skill and and abilities that Fred had. He, he just was an unbelievable athlete, fast, strong. And the crazy thing is, is Fred never lifted a weight in wow. the weight room. 
that I know of. I mean, he despised lifting weights. Now, <laughs> bear in mind, we all grew up back uh, here in Louisiana that if you wanted to work, since we are in the Pine Belt, uh, some some form of lifting lumber or pulp wood or something was kind of in your DNA as a summer job. So Fred got strong naturally, but he also was very strong because I have seen him haul short wood, and I've seen him at the lumber yard working with me so <laughs> he was as strong a man as I have ever seen as fast of a big man as I've ever seen and he had the biggest heart of anybody I possibly have almost ever known he just was a kind gentle fun loving guy naturally strong as we say country strong from your description Bert uh, was described oftentimes uh, even for that time let alone for this time as an undersized very much undersized defensive end, edge pass rusher extraordinaire. Uh, st the uh, stat of sacks wasn't kept until 1982, but it's estimated he probably had about 100 career sacks. Your on-field experiences, uh, uh, as you look back on him being one of the most fearsome pass rushers, just terrorized quarterbacks throughout his NFL career. Uh, he did that, and, and believe it or not, uh... Well, I did play against him one time when he was in San Diego, but I never played the 49ers when he was on the team. Mm. Actually, I never played against the 49ers in my career. Mm. Uh, uh, when I went to L.A., uh, I was I unfortunately broke my neck two weeks before we played the 49ers, so I didn't get to play in that game either. And uh, when you think back uh, about his uh, career, did it uh, surprise you? I guess you were probably the least surprised to see how his skills translated and how he thrived as an edge rusher and uh, as disruptive a force as he was all the way to Canton in the Hall of Fame. Oh, I, I was not surprised at all. <laughs> uh, the only thing that uh, I was surprised about is he was such a gentle person. <laughs> you know, normally you think of a defensive lineman or a defensive end having to have a little mean streak in him. <laughs> in order to do the things they do to quarterbacks like myself. But Fred was not, he, he had none in his DNA at all. He was just such a kind and gentle person that uh, uh, he, he will be missed. But he has a lot of children in our community and, and brothers and sisters, and, and I know them all, and I know they will miss him, but he, is, uh, he was just a great guy. Well, from the rust and rifle to, I guess, uh, he could have been the rust and wrecking ball uh, for the havoc that he wreaked on offenses <laughs> through his career. Uh, Bert, we really thank you very much uh, for, for your memories uh, about uh, Fred, and uh, it sounds like he will be sorely missed uh, by the, uh, the Rustin community. Once again, as you mentioned, a man of faith. He had been uh, Reverend uh, Fred, Dream, uh, Fr Fred Dean for a number of years there with his presence in the community. Yes, and, and did such a great job with the youth, uh, both in his church and throughout the community, and along with the Boys and Girls Club. He, he's just a fine fella. I mean, you know, that's just, uh, you know, somebody might want to know what you'd like to be known as, is, and just a good friend. And uh, that's he was a good friend to so many people that uh, he'll be sorely missed. Bert, thanks very much for sharing, and uh, we hope to uh, be able to visit with you again as a friend of the games people play that we enjoyed having you on so much, and hopefully it'll be a much uh, much more pleasant circumstances, maybe uh, with the Joe Burrow leading the Bengals to the playoffs or something that we can get you to weigh in on that'll be a, a little bit more pleasant, certainly, than uh, l the loss of Fred Dean, which is certainly a great loss. Yes, it is. Well, y'all have a good day up there in Boston. Look forward to coming to see you at your at your corner's place. <laughs>